Look, the, the, source of the source of the turmoil, in my view, and the turbulence has been the Fed Reserve, uh, not only having engaged in liftoff, which I thought was too early, I think they've, they've committed a policy error by kind of lifting the Fed funds right by 25 basis points in December. But what happened in the first couple of days of January is they, they released publicly their internal projections that each of the FOMC members have of interest rates for the Fed funds rate. Um, there are 17 members, so effectively for each year, there's a dot that represents where the expectation of each member that each member has for the Fed funds rate. And for 2016, uh, there were no more than uh, four uh, of those dots that represent each interest rate forecast. There were only four of those actually below 1%. So the overwhelming majority of the FOMC members basically believe that the Fed funds rate should be or will be above 1% by the end of 2016. Now clearly what stock markets and also bond markets are effectively kind of telling the Fed over the last month with all the volatility is that they don't believe that the US economy is ready for a rate hiking cycle on that scale. Now in the lead up to, to lift off in December, a number of the Fed members had, had explained that they believed that the, the new uh, normalisation of monetary policy would be low and slow. So the new peak would be lower than pre prior peaks and that it would be a gradual tightening cycle. And that gave me some comfort that there wouldn't be a, uh, a sell off of risk assets. It's very difficult to reconcile those internal communications of those Fed members with the internal projections, which basically kind of suggests that there's going to be another, at least another three rate hikes. Um, I believe that what's going on in China is pretty much symptomatic of the view that monetary policy in, in the US is, going, is too tight and going to be too tight if, it's, if, if the Fed funds rate is lifted by three times over the course of this year. Look, I think they'd, they'd like to think they are, uh, but I think that the next, look, at a time when the IP cycle is tipping over, IP has not only stalled for the last three to six months, it's actually tipping over. That's partly related to the, the fall in the oil price. But at a time when other manufacturing uh, activity indicators are also weakening, including the ISM, the diffusion index, uh, then clearly any kind of further tightening is going to kind of further derail the recovery. Now, I, th I believe that the FOMC members have probably drawn some comfort from the fact that labour market has been reasonably firm. But typically non-farm payrolls and employment more generally is a lagging indicator. IP and manufacturing is typically a leading indicator. So if history is any guide, that stalling and the, and the slowdown and the tipping over of the IP cycle will probably lead to or be associated with some slowdown in employment growth. Um, so I believe that that's against that backdrop. I think what's likely is that uh, as employment growth slows from here, I believe that the next set of projections, inter internal projections from the FOMC members will basically show more of those dots for 2016 drop below 1%. And I think that will be an acknowledgement that they've been too hawkish and they've been too aggressive with their expectations about the rate, hike, rate hiking cycle. And I'm not going to rule out at this stage that by the end of the year they might have actually taken back that 25 basis point increase.